Welcome to CS4406 Computer Graphics. This is the Unit 7 Lecture Part 1. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking a lot more about interpolation and spline modeling. Now, we began this conversation in the previous unit when we started to talk about graphics. And one of the things that we talked about was, was the fact that one of the methods of doing procedural animation was that we could use interpolation. And interpolation, basically, we defined it as essentially being when I'm using some kind of a mathematical function or equation to compute how something's going to be animated. And we're going to explore a little bit more in this particular lecture how that's accomplished. And one important way of doing these kinds of interpolations is, as you saw in the example that we had in the previous unit's lecture, where we had that kind of fly through the columns, where I'm moving the camera through the columns along kind of a, a, a curved path. And how do I actually compute what those curves are? Because essentially I'm coming up with a, an X and a Y. I can potentially even come up with a Z coordinate, all based upon a curve. Okay? And so essentially in an interpolation, if I have a few points, I can actually define a curve. Or I can define a surface that has a curve. Um, and using polygons. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm saying I'm going to define several points and essentially I'm going to use a uh, an algorithm to fit a curve inside of that polygon and we're going to look at exactly how that's done um, so essentially I'm going to define some form of a, a quadratic function of a variable and that function is actually going to define how I'm going to fit the curve inside a polygon a lot of really yucky math stuff here. So what I'm going to actually do is show you some examples of how this works. Perhaps something that will make it very understandable. So I want to throw, throw or show you just three different kinds of interpolations um, or perhaps put it differently um, methods of calculating curves. So for example the first one is the Bernstein um, the Bernstein curves and, and it's Bernstein comes up with um, the basis for some easier curves. And essentially what you see here is that I have one, two, three points forming a triangle. And inside of that triangle, essentially what I'm doing is based upon those three points, I'm computing a curve. Another example of that is a, is a cubic bezier curve. Uh, again, we can see in this particular case, I've taken four control points and those four control points have actually defined the curve that would fit within them. Now you're probably looking at this thing saying well, how the heck are you coming up with that curve from these four points. So wait one second and we're going to get to that in just a moment. Um, kind of another interpolation um, is, is, is called the cat mole spool. Now basically what these are, cat mole spool and Bezier and Bernstein, um, all of these are methodologies for or um, equations, if you would, algorithms for computing curves. And they take certain parameters, and using those parameters, they actually calculate a curve. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how that kind of works with, with, the, um, with some Bezier curves. So imagine, if you would, that I have, and I'm, I'm going to kind of draw on this thing over here. Imagine that I have a line segment here, right? And so I'm going to actually just try to figure out how to vary from point 0 to point 1. So maybe point 0 is starts at 0, point 1 goes to 10, right? So I'm going to vary point 0 to point 1 from 0 to 10, okay? Now, imagine that I have two points. The first, or not two points, but I should say two line segments. The first one goes from 0 to 1, and the second one goes from 1 to 2. Now, 1 to 2 is, let's say it's roughly 10 in length. And this other one, 0 to 1, let's say 0 to 1 is 20 in length. Essentially what we are doing is we're saying, I'm going to figure out how to move each of these so that they are moving the exact same distance to the to the to the end, to the destination so in other words if 0 to 1 were 20 in length 
and 1 to 2 were 10 in length. For every time I moved 1 on this line segment, the 1 to 2 line segment, I would actually have to move 2 on the 0 to 1 line segment. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And when I do that, I'm, I'm going to move 0, I'm going to go from from 1 to 20 here, and I'm going to go from 1 to 10 here, and I'm going to use those two numbers as inputs. Those two numbers are going to become inputs into one of my computations. Perhaps it's the Bernstein, perhaps it's the Cutmill, um, the, the Catmill mole um, calculation. But essentially, I'm going to use them as inputs, and what they're going to have as an output is they're going to help me compute this point that I see in red that's moving between the two of them. Right? And as I move the position of these line segments, what winds up happening is that how it draws, draws that curve changes. So you notice here how you're kind of wondering before, well, how did I come up with that curve from the points that I had? And now you get a sense of how that works. As I move that position, the x, y um, position that it's computing is going to change because the way that the inputs are being put into that equation are changing. And they're changing because, again, the way that I'm going from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2, since I have to arrive at the destination exactly the same time for both of them, the inputs are going to be different. Hopefully that makes sense. And we can see that when I have four parameters, and I'm going to try to move this kind of to the, to the points that we, we saw in the example. Um, in, in the slide there, but you can kind of see where I'm moving my points and I wind up getting a curve looking very much like the one that I had. In this particular case, since I have actually got four total points, right, that means that I'm moving along one, two, three line segments simultaneously. Okay? And so, essentially, you can see how I'm actually computing this using the value coming from 0 to 1, then the value coming from 1 to 2, and then the value from 2 to 3, where each of these is starting and arriving at the, from the start point to the destination point at exactly the same period, exactly the same time. So um, what's different between them is the amount of each point that I'm moving is going to be different based upon the length of the of the um, of the the line segment so you can see that it fundamentally changes the shape of that curve which is how I can actually calculate um, these curves and use a mathematical um, algorithm to generate them and I can use these kinds of curves as part of an animation process because I can use that to create movement. So maybe I want to, you know, if you ever work with a video game and you have the, what they call them, NPCs or non-player combatants, um, the non-player combatants, a lot of times what, what's happening is that we're actually moving them using something like um, one of these interpolations, right, where they have some kind of a path that they move on. It, it's not just a straight line in many cases, but you can doubt, tell that there's a definite path or a definite um, uh, pattern to what they're doing. But of course, if I variably change these, um, these points a little bit, the path becomes a little bit variable as well. So hopefully that gives you some sense of, of how we generate interpolations and splines. By the way, all of these are considered to be splines, so a, a curve that's generated in this fashion is, is just known as a spline. And I can use that as a way of generating animation.